Hi, Paul here with a, a pragmatic proposition for you regarding our SD Remote app and Stand Reports and all the other functionality associated with it. Now, SD Remote is a new app for our 8 series. It's, uh, it goes beyond um, our Wingman app, which was for the 6 series and for the Mix Pre. SD Remote is an extension of that and adds some nice new functionality. So let me talk you through some of the features here. Um, so first of all, I've got this currently hooked up to my um, Scorpio here via USB. Um, this is running on an Android uh, Samsung tablet. Now you've got these tabs at the bottom which switch between various screens. The first four tabs are related, uh, show you the first, the, the 32 meet channels, um, 1 through 8, 9 through 16, etc. Notice on each page you have other functionality as well. You've got a nice time code readout here and various information about remaining time on the recording media, the SSD and the two SD cards. You've got information about sample rate, frame rate, and also your absolute time counter here, and also what you're synced to. So that's very useful information. You've got quick entry fields here for the next take and the current take where you can enter various textual uh, metadata and obviously nice meters here working downwards we have a channel name for each meter now if you want to edit those channel names you just make sure channel names is selected here and then you come in and enter your track name metadata there now obviously that's conveyed through to the Scorpio and you can see that here I just entered boom here and you can see boom on the screen just there um, now, I can also um, mute channels. So when that's set to channel mute, I can very quickly pull out channels from a mix. Um, if you don't want to accidentally do that, just make sure that's not selected. Going to the bottom of the meters here, we've got a solo and an arm. Now, Wingman didn't ever have the solo capability, so it's really nice to be able to PFL directly from SD Remote. And then, of course, you've got the ability to arm channels. And you can do this, as from a previous video, you can arm during record as well without having to stop recording. So that's what a metering page looks like, and it's essentially the same across all pages. Oh, just one other thing here. Sometimes you don't want to accidentally hit arm. So there's an arm lock feature here. When that's on, I can't accidentally disarm or arm a track. Pretty useful. So let's move across now to the take list. Now this is a comprehensive metadata entry um, system. It goes beyond Wingman. Um, here's our list of, of uh, takes. Now one of the nice things about uh, SD Remote compared to Wingman is actually you can play back from the app as well. Um, I could do this from this page actually. So it'll play back the last take. That's really nice. I can even fast forward or uh, rewind or fast forward, so that's nice. But another nice thing is in your take list, I can go back and review any take just by selecting it and then hitting play. So something that Wingman never had, but we got this request, so we added this to the SD Remote. Okay, um, obviously here we have all the metadata you want to add. You can edit metadata for project, scene name, and you know, with uh, the 8 series, you've got far more than nine characters. I could enter a lot more characters here. You know, in post-production these days, they want more descriptive file names. So having the ability to add a lot more um, characters in your C name is really useful. Um, take number, you can add your sticky notes here. We spoke about sticky notes in another uh, video. Check that out and add notes here. And then you've got all the ability to edit the track names of all 32 channels and your buses here. Transport is on every page, so you don't have to switch back to the metering page to get to your transport controls. They're always there on every page, including the reports page as well, which you're going to come to in a minute. We've laid it out this way because these transport controls are really easy to reach with your right hand thumb without having to reach up to the top or anything like that. So this is very user friendly. Um, we have this uh, detailed um, info pane here, which tells you information about the takes you've recorded. Um, 
number of channels, you know, a bit depth, the role, the role name, what media it's recorded to, really comprehensive information there. So moving on, let's now take a look at the reports tab. Now Sound Reports has, uh, we've really taken this a step further with SD Remote. Um, basically on the left side here, this is where you enter all your Sound Report header information. Um, and it's really easy to do. I can just keep scrolling up here and enter whatever information I want to. Notice at the very top here, the first field is called role. Now this is your role name. And as you all know, this is very important for post-production to see. So we've got this at the very top. And when you actually produce your sound report, that will be in the title. The role name will be in the title of the um, report. It defaults to being the current record folder name, which is exactly what you want. But you can disable that and use uh, an override that with whatever name you want it to be just by deselecting the use record folder. And the, the system date will automatically be thrown there as well. So we've got loads of fields here you can use to customize the header of your report. And then when you actually create your port, report, you can choose um, which reports to do, um, uh, whether they're being generated from the um, solid state drive or the SD cards or any combination thereof. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do SSD and SD1. There might be different material on the different, different media. For instance, you might just have your stereo mix information on the SD1 card, and then you might have all your, your mix and ISO information on the SSD. So you might want to generate reports from both. This toggle switch here, sibling folders, is really useful if you've been working, on, say, with uh, daily folders, and you know, each day you're creating a, a, a new sound report. Now it might be at the end of the week you want to generate sound reports for each, uh, for each of those days, but doing it all at once. By enabling that, it's going to look through the current project folder and create sound reports individually for each of those daily folders. So that's a huge time saver. You don't need to just create a new one for each project and select a project then create a new sound report file. Um, so this is really speeding up the whole uh, sound report uh, creation workflow. Once you've decided that, you can then choose what formats you want to email. Um, when you hit the Create Report button, what it actually does is instruct Scorpio to create a CSV sound report in the record folder uh, drives on Scorpio. But if you also have email PDF um, selected, at, when that CSV uh, report is created, it's going to automatically pull that file into your tablet and then the tablet is going to very rapidly uh, create a PDF from that CSV file. So the tablet will hold both the CSV and PDF file and then we can choose to send those, um, both of them or, or uh, one individually. Okay, in this case I'm going to send both. I can choose to wrap them up into a zip file to just make it uh, the file size a little bit smaller um, and just to make it a little bit neater in terms of just sending a single file. But uh, I think it's nice not to have to send uh, as a zip, especially if you're sending to someone who's working on, a, um, say, an iPhone where they don't have a dzip utility. So this is fine. So once you've created that, um, let's uh, uh, hit create report. So we hit the create report. Now, on this Android uh, tablet here, it's going to give me the option of how to send that. I can obviously just email it um, directly to uh, whoever I want to send it to, but there's a whole range of other options too. I can save it directly to Google Drive. I could Dropbox it to someone. I could even Bluetooth it directly to someone's device standing next to me or on the production set. I could Skype it. There's many ways I could send that. So in this particular example, I'm just going to select uh, Save to Drive. I'm just going to do this once for now. If I wanted to do that every time, I could select Always. So for now, I'm just going to hit Just Once. Now you can see it's uh, produced a list of all the reports that I'm going to send. Uh, there's the SSD reports, both CSV and PDF, as well as the reports on the SD1 card, CSV and PDF. I'm going to send it to uh, my account here on uh, Google Drive, and I want it to go to whatever folder. So this could be a, um, uh, a, Google, uh, a Google Drive account that post-production provide you, and a folder name that they provide you to upload all your sound reports to. In this case, I'm going to hit Save. 
I've got, uh, imagine this computer here to be post-production uh, with their Google Drive folder, eight series sound reports shown here. I'm gonna be sending it to eight series sound reports here. Let's see what happens when I hit save. So now it's, those files are being created and, and uploaded. Um, if I refresh this screen just here, we can see those four reports immediately in post-productions folder. How cool is that?